So this is my foundry. I finally finished it. Let me open the lid here. The bottom of it is just a 55 gallon drum that I cut at I think 14 inches. I cut it off and the inside of it is I used a five gallon bucket to make the inside of it and filled the gap with uh, basically a homemade refractory cement. It is Portland cement, fire clay, uh, sand, and perlite. And here I've got the crucible. On the bottom, I, on the sides and the bottom, I put some uh, ceramic fiber insulation. This is just a fire brick to give the crucible something to sit on. For the lid, I cut off like two inches of the top of the barrel and inside I welded a grid of rebar across so then I could pour the cement and the rebar would hold it in place and then I just welded the hinges onto the back and drilled a four inch hole in the top for the exhaust. <laughs> New and improved foundry burner. Uh, it gets a lot hotter than the old one. I've got a three-quarter inch a pipe nipple that just goes, the hose from my shop vac goes over that and I use that as a blower. This valve here controls the airflow Then it goes into a one inch, a one inch T that I use as a mixing chamber for the gas hose. I just have this, uh, I was originally using a three eighths inch air compressor hose but that wasn't giving me enough gas. So now this is just a three quarter inch garden hose going into this valve here to regulate the flow. Then it goes through this tube that's one inch into a nozzle that's a one inch to a one and a half inch, or one inch to one and a quarter inch uh, black iron pipe reducer that I just stick through this little hole on the side of the foundry. I actually have to unscrew the nozzle to do that because it doesn't quite fit through, but I can just screw it back in on the inside. And then we're ready to melt some metal. Stick it through here, screw it on, it doesn't have to be tight, it doesn't have to be sealed, it just has to go on there, and then I just put it back into the, well, what's wrong? I should be able to put it back into the hole. There we go. And that way it's inside the insulation, it's not in the flame. I accidentally had it sticking out too far the first time I tried it directly in the path of the fire as it swirls around the chamber and it melted my nozzle. So we can't do that again. Okay, so now we're going to light it. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is turn on the gas a little bit and then stand very far back because I've already burned off my hair and my eyebrows doing this once. And I will just light the fire. There we go. Now, I turn the gas on all the way, and then turn the air on. And you can't see it because it's daylight, but we have a nice little fire going around the, uh, around the crucible. Now, to regulate the airflow from the vacuum, I use a combination of this valve right here, which is actually going all the way, and this, which is a uh, router speed I can turn it on to increase the airflow and make it hotter. But for aluminum, I don't need to do that. I just leave it on low.
just a piece of rebar with a piece of flat steel I cut this out of, welded on the top. There's not much slide to scrape off, but I'll scrape what I can. Stay like this. 